Hi, Sita. Hi, Catrice. Hi, AJ. Today we're sitting in Irwin Hall, and the artist we are looking at today is Filippo Brunelleschi, which was an Italian Renaissance artist who was born in 1377 and died in 1446. Yes, yes, his family wanted him to follow in his father's footsteps by giving him a literary and mathematical education so he could be a lawyer like his father. But instead, he decided to pursue an education in art. He then enrolled in an art school where he was a student of metalworkers, goldworkers, and bronze smiths. So the two pieces we will be reviewing today is Brunelleschi's The Sacrifice of Isaac, which was created in 1401, as well as Brunelleschi's Dome, which is also known as the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore Dome, which was started in 1420 and ended in 1436. Which leads us to 1401, where Brunelleschi entered the Cathedral of Vesci board to compete in the Santa Maria del Fiore Cathedral Doors. So our first piece we're looking at is Brunelleschi's The Sacrifice of Isaac. My very first observation of this piece of artwork is that it's very dramatic and disturbing. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I think this piece is very violent, and when we think of the story of Abraham sacrificing Isaac, we don't think of Abraham grabbing Isaac by the neck with the willingness in his eyes to kill him. Instead of Abraham looking sad or distressed that he's about to kill his only son, he looks more angry and scary as if he's a murderer. Abraham is totally represented as a murderer, the angels forcefully having to stop Abraham from killing his son. Yes, yes. In the angels and their movements, I feel a lot of raw emotion. Also, I notice that the angels' panel are designed in a gothic quarterfoil style. When I look at Isaac, his face appears to be looking towards the heavens, thinking in his mind, God, please don't let this happen to me, while also having the question, does my father really have to kill me? Unfortunately, Brunelleschi lost the competition. Even though this was a minor setback, he still went on to create what was then known as the world's biggest dome. You're right. Brunelleschi ended up traveling to Rome after losing the competition. There he examined the remains of the great city and found inspiration to continue on with his career in art. I absolutely agree with Brunelleschi's decision to pursue his career in art. When looking at the piece, the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore Dome, Specifically, the Brunelleschi's Dome, I am overwhelmed with emotion. The first observation I made when looking at Brunelleschi's Dome is the size of the architectural fee. It's absolutely spectacular. I feel as if the dome itself has the power to consume everything around it. Oh yeah, I agree. It triumphs over the whole city, with the height being 376 feet and the width being 147 feet. Yeah, it's in a really impressive height. The, Inta the Italian painter Vasari states, It's as though the sky is envious, as it keeps on shooting thunderbolts down at it, believing that its height has almost exceeded the height of air. Yeah, we get a sense of how big the dome truly is. When further observing this fine piece of architecture, I notice the in-depth bricking design. The way the tiles were laid out was called the herringbone pattern. We see here how the bricks go up, and then down, up, and then down. Each time a new brick is added to the dome, each individual brick locks into place. Very true. Ross King, the author of Brunus Cicelli's Dome, states, This expression no doubt alludes to the technique of bricklaying at Santa Maria del Fiore, the process of waiting for the martyr of one course as of masonry to dry before laying another. Exactly. Well, looking at the dome, I think to myself, how did it not collapse? When constructing the dome, Brunelleschi wanted to make the dome as light as possible. The inside of the dome was hollow, helping it stay intact. Also, another reason why the dome did not collapse is because the force that was being applied to the base of the dome traveled down and outward. Oh yeah, that was brilliant for Brunelleschi to construct. Overall, Brunelleschi's dome was a magnificent piece of architectural artwork. Once called a buffoon and a babbler, Brunelleschi is now known as one of the world's greatest Renaissance artists.